So in this lecture, we are going to talk about a very interesting and useful diagram, which is called as, as you can see here, Mollier diagram, right? So you may think that, sir, we have already covered very important and useful diagrams, useful property diagrams, right? Like PV diagram, TS diagram, and they pretty much are very useful. They can be used to solve any type of problem. So what is the need for one more diagram? How is this diagram different? What exactly is this diagram? So in this diagram, just like we used to plot PV and TS, in this diagram, we are going to plot HS, which is enthalpy and entropy. So it is also called as enthalpy entropy diagram, HS diagram, Mollier diagram. These are the different names for the same diagram. Now, you may think that, sir, we have already covered PV diagram, TS diagram, and we are able to find out any value from those diagrams. So what is the need to introduce another diagram? Just wait for a few minutes and you will realize how useful and beautiful this diagram is, right? Looks complicated also. I will show you that. So in HS diagram, as you can very easily conclude that if there is a horizontal line, straight horizontal line, then it represents isenthalpic process. A line of, this is going to be a line of constant enthalpy, right or not? Which we call as isenthalpic process. Any process which goes like this is going to be isenthalpic process. In a very similar way, any process which goes like this, which goes like this, is going to be isentropic process because for this process, the value of S is going to be a constant, a constant value, right? So the straight lines on this diagram also have the significance just like previous diagrams, right? For PV, straight line was showing constant pressure, vertical line was showing constant volume in a similar way, constant enthalpy and constant entropy. Now, one thing becomes very clear when you look at this diagram, that in other diagrams, if you had to represent isenthalpic process, isentropic process, it was not a straight line and it was a curved line, which is slightly difficult to manipulate and to calculate values from, right? For example, if there is a process, an isentropic process, a very common type of process, we want many processes ideally to be isentropic, right? To have maximum output. So if an isentropic process is going on, and you need to find out delta H for that process, change of enthalpy for that process. What you have to do? It is extremely simple for this case. This is the value of H3. This is the value of H3. This is the value of H4, right? From here, you can calculate H3 is going to be this length. This is going to be H3. And up to this point, this is going to be, this is going to be your H4. Difference of them will represent the length of this line, which will be equal to the value of delta H, which will be equal to the value of delta H. Delta H is H3 minus H4, means this length, right? So you imagine that you are now having a graph where if you have, let's say, access to actual Mollier diagram, actual Mollier uh, graph, and you have plotted two points of an isentropic process, just the length of that line or in a way this value, this value, difference of this value will quickly give you the value of delta H change of enthalpy for that process and think where it is useful. Think. If you want, pause the video and think. If you recall, in thermodynamics, we have specially dedicated a lot of study on steady flow processes and to be specific, isentropic steady flow processes, right? When we were discussing about nozzle, compressor and pumps, you recall in all those cases, they were steady flow process and in all of them, we considered the process to be isentropic to maximize our output or to minimize the work input, right? So in those cases, delta H was something which was repeatedly coming. Either the heat or work interaction was directly equal to delta H, or if you use the steady flow equation, this delta H value was very important there, right? I'm sure you are doing revision regularly. You can recall what I'm talking about. So there you go. That is one of the most important applications of HS diagram, Mollier diagram. Plotting those steady flow isentropic processes here. 
and those steady flow processes are not isolated they are extremely used in thermodynamics application when we will be covering different cycles different power cycles we will realize that how compressors condensers nozzles all those small small components that we have covered and the delta h value and the steady flow energy equation are going to be applied in those cases as well so this small air diagram is very important very useful for these situations for thermodynamic application situations as well now here as i just told you that this is the benefit right straight line easy to plot easy to measure right easy to represent but there is one more benefit of this i told you the benefit of delta h at this point of time right but there is one more benefit of it i will not tell you that think about it in few minutes by the end of the lecture i will discuss that and that also is very interesting benefit of molier diagram now if you recall we used when we used we were discussing pv diagram and ts diagram we have drawn the saturation diagram saturation dome right of course that dome looks different for this case it may not be called as a dome necessarily it looks slightly different right so on left side saturated liquid line was there in other property diagrams also here also it is the same on the right side saturated vapor was there here also it is the same but saturated vapor line is not starting from here exactly right it is starting way earlier than that this is your critical point this is your critical point which was here in those diagrams right so these are some of the things which you should know are the qualities are the properties of molier diagram you can have a question direct question from them in the exam so this point is called as critical point we know what is the significance of critical point in a similar way how we will represent constant pressure process constant temperature process the constant pressure process will be shown like this these are different constant pressure process this is some value of pressure p1 p2 then this is p3 then this is p3 then this is p4 all of these lines are showing constant pressure lines and in this direction they are increasing so if you got a molier diagram these lines are represented remember that p4 is more than p3 is more than p2 is more than p1 how constant temperature lines will be shown like this notice that in this region in this region which is the region where it is entirely vapor right where we consider the vapor for numerical purposes to be ideal gas right remember even recall that for this case it is almost a straight line in this region in this region it is almost a straight line not entirely it is curved here 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 but as you move further it is almost a straight line because this is the region where the steam can be taken as an ideal gas right and for ideal gas enthalpy is a function of only temperature right you remember this is a function this is a function of only temperature right so these lines are representing h is equal to constant h is equal to constant so if h is constant which on the opposite way means t would be constant right straight lines are h is equal to constant so if h is not changing t will also not change right that's why here these lines are looking straight another important property of molier diagram from where question can be asked do note that molier diagram is not going to be asked in very much detail right how we are drawing these lines how we are drawing these lines all that is not much relevant for gate gate has not asked much questions from this topic that is why i can go on and on about this right but there is no need of that for gate exam that's why even for many other exams also so that is why we are not talking about how these lines are going to be like this but we will discuss something interesting about these lines don't worry we will discuss something mathematical about these lines by the end of this lecture and these are the lines of constant quality or constant dryness fraction x right as we know if you move closer to saturated vapor line the dryness fraction increases right this is the line of x is equal to 1 dryness fraction 1 right so this could be line of 0.9 dryness fraction 0.8 0.7 right in this direction it is going to increase and now if i show you the actual molier diagram for say water water and steam right for any specific material we do it right so for water steam situation this is how it is going to look like looks very complicated many different lines 
But if you break it down, you will realize that these are the lines of constant pressure. These are the constant pressure lines, right? Not straight, slightly curved as I showed you. These are the constant temperature lines, constant temperature lines. Correct. And these are the lines of constant dryness fraction, constant dryness fraction, right? These are the three main lines of this Mollier diagram for water steam system. Now, what I was telling you in the beginning, that these diagrams find their more utility for the cases of steady flow processes, right? Where isentropic process is going on. But what if the process or some process is not isentropic? How would you compare a isentropic process with an actual process, with an irreversible process, with a non-isentropic process, right? So we know that if you represent it like this, suppose this is the line of constant pressure P1 and P2 and between these two, there is one process going on. What would we call this process? What would we call this process? Compression or expansion? Recall how pressure was changing. Which pressure is more out of P1 or P2? P1 is more, right? Recall from here quickly, right? These were more. Don't think that this P1 and that P1 are same. In that diagram, this is written as P1 and this is written as P2. Right? Here, this is written as P1 and this is P2. So, don't mug up. Don't mug up. What I told you that in this direction, pressure increases. Right? So, here also same thing will happen. In this diagram, pressure, in this direction, pressure will increase. Which means that P1 is going to be more than P2. And if a process is occurring from P1 to P2, means towards a lower pressure, it is moving. It is it can be considered like an expansion process, out of compression and expansion, right? So, this is an expansion process going on, isentropic expansion from here to here, from 1 to 2 S. S is representing isentropic process. This is a reversible isentropic process, but actual process can be different like this. And we know irreversible process are represented by a dotted line. That's what we are doing there. For this case, I already told you. If you have to find out delta H for this process, this is going to be delta H for isentropic process, right? This value of H1 minus this value of H2, H2S. Similarly, for that, if you want to find out delta H, what would be the value? This is H1 and this is H2. Subtract them, you will get delta H. But rem rem recall, I told you one thing. I told you something. I told you that, yes, this is the beauty of it, right? Directly ent ent enthalpy are getting in a straight line. But there is one more benefit of it. You know what? The horizontal line, this, this line, this line, what is it representing? This line, this gap is representing delta S for actual irreversible process, right? For reversible process, it is zero because one and two are vertical. But for this line, for this line, I am showing you, for this line, for this line, this was the value of S1 for one and this is S2. Right? So, delta S is S2 minus S1. What is it telling you? It is telling you how much irreversibility. It is giving you an idea of how irreversible the process is. How much irreversibility is associated with the process. Directly it is telling you just by the length of it. And this is the beauty of TS diagram also. In TS diagram also entropy is here. Right? So, that also gives you an idea of it. But this diagram combines both of the benefits that we get from other diagram as well as the benefit of delta H. So, there are many good theoretical questions that can be framed from what I have discussed so far. In fact, numerical questions also can be framed. Now, let us try to answer this question. At a point in the Mollier diagram, the slope of constant pressure line is given by in the Mollier diagram, there are constant pressure lines. In those constant pressure lines, at any given point, what will be the value of slope? That's what this question is asking you. It is equal to temperature at that point, pressure at that point, the value is zero and data is insufficient. So out of these options, which is going to be the correct one? Think about it. You can pause the video and Try to get to the answer. You may think that, sir, you have not told or talked about any of this in the Mollier diagram. How are we expected to answer it? But just think about it. As I told you, 
enthalpy, entropy are not something new for you, right? We have just represented them in a graph in a coordinate system. That's it. No new concept has been added here. Just a variation of graph or a representation we have given. That's it, right? So basically when question is asked, now I am discussing the solution, okay? So you are now expected to pause the video and try to answer. Slope in a Mollier diagram, how do we define it, right? Let's go back to the very first empty uh, this graph. In any graph, if this is x, this is y, how do we define the slope? This is the slope, correct? This is how you can define the slope at any point, right? Whatever, whatever variation you have at any given point, slope is dy by dx, right? Which means for this graph, for HS graph, this slope is going to be dH by dS. So you are expected to find their ratio. I have told you about this, that whenever you have to find out the ratio, there are two, three ways to do it. One is to find out the actual value of dH and actual value of dS and divide them, right? Does it seem feasible in this question? No. You have not been given any data where you can find out the delta H or dH and put here or find out delta S or dS or put here. That's not possible. What is the other way? To find out any relation where you can divide dH and dS. Any relation where you can get the ratio of dH and dS. And that is where you will get the answer. That's how you will get the answer for this question. Think about it. Do you know any relation, any relation for dH or dS? Do you know any expression where you have both of them present and you can manipulate the expression and get their ratio? Think about it. There is one very famous equation regarding this. Think about it. I'm talking about TDS equation. If you recall in one of the TDS equations, we have both dS and dH present. And now it will look very simple to you. Question was just about this expression. If you are able to think about this expression, you will get your answer. In fact, the result of this, I expect you to remember, right? I'll talk about it. So we need this ratio and for constant pressure line. This is important, right? It has given you for constant pressure line. Constant pressure means delta P or dP is zero. For constant pressure, dP or delta P is zero. So this term becomes zero. Simply, this is your expression. And dH by dS would be equal to T. dS, dH by dS would be equal to T. What does it tell you? It tells you firstly that the slope is positive, right? This temperature, is absolute temperature. This temperature is absolute temperature. It cannot be negative. Means if temperature is given to you in degree Celsius, make sure to add 273 to it. So it tells you if it is in Celsius, then 273. It is in, which is equal to temperature in Kelvin. So it tells you that firstly, this slope is not negative, right? It is going to be positive slope. And secondly, it tells you that if you look at this line, if you look at this line, asha, pehle, let's uh, tick the right option. So answer is A here. Answer is A here. Answer is temperature, right? This is T. Let me even show it here. Let me even show it here that the slope of constant pressure line on Mollier diagram is T temperature, which is absolute temperature in Kelvin. What I was telling you that temperature in Kelvin, how does it affect the graph? If you notice constant pressure line, if you notice constant pressure line, this is how they look, right? You can observe that they are diverging. They are diverging. One is going like this, other is going like this. They are moving away from each other. How? Because this at this point and at this point, if I compare these two points, which has higher value of temperature? This is vapor region gaseous region. I just told you here that temperature increases in this direction. I explained that, right? So at this point, temperature will be higher. At this point, it will be lower. Means here, temperature will be more. Here, temperature will be less. Which means if I talk about the slope, at this point, slope will be higher and at this point, slope will be lower, right? Higher slope and lower slope. 
So you can clearly see that these lines are diverging from each other. All of these things which I am telling you can be asked as theoretical question in GATE or in some other exams as well about Mollier diagram. So you are expected to remember this result here. Which result? This result. This result. Got it? And its implication, I told you, slope is going to be positive because this is temperature in Kelvin, absolute temperature. And because of this, the lines of constant pressure, isobars, isobars, lines of constant pressure, we call it isobars, right? So isobars in a Mollier diagram diverge from each other. Isobars diverge from each other. So these are some of the important points, points, useful points related to Mollier diagram.